So I'd like to do problem number 47 now, which is 2y double prime plus y prime plus 2y is equal to delta 5t, y of 0 is equal to 0, y prime of 0 is also equal to 0. Okay, so I think I'm just going to do 47, 48, and 50 in the next few problems. So this one I'll do with some explanation, and then I will then I'll do the rest quickly. So here we go. I'm going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. That's the Laplace transform of 2y double prime plus y prime plus 2y. So this is the Laplace transform, or 2 times s squared times capital Y of s minus s times y of 0, which we know to be 0, minus y prime of 0, which we also know to be 0. I add this to an s times capital Y of s minus y of 0, which I know to be 0, and I add this to 2 times capital Y of s. So on the left-hand side, as is the case when I have 0 valued initial conditions, y of s multiplies the characteristic polynomial 2s squared plus s plus um, 2. Right, and so, let's see, that's the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I take the Laplace transform of this delta function, delta 5t. We look at our transform table, I think that's 19 in there some places, e to the negative 5s. What this really represents is that whatever's about to happen now, it's going to happen on a time delay. It's going to happen on a time delay of 5 seconds. Why should that happen? Well, this delta function is going to hit the system and give it the only energy that it has, um, because it starts off with zero initial um, displacement and initial velocity, if you want to think about it like that. And so this delta function is giving all that energy to it in that instance, and that's what this is about. So capital Y of S is equal to e to the negative 5S over 2S squared plus S plus 2, or e to the negative 5S over 2 times 1 over S squared plus 1 half S plus 1. So what we're seeing here is that the natural behavior, which is encoded into the characteristic equation, is being um, talked about being delayed in five seconds, right? So um, I've got to figure out what sort of solution. Oh, no, that's right. In this class, I taught e to the negative 5s. Just complete the square in the denominator. That should be your first instinctual thing. So I get s squared plus 1 half s. So first instinctual move, take the one half, divide it by two, which is one fourth, and square it. So that's one sixteenth minus it one sixteenth. Right? And so this is equal to e to the negative five s over two times one over s plus one fourth quantity squared um, minus sixteen one sixteenth. So this is going to be e to the negative 5s over 2 times um, this part right here, right? I need it to be plus um, negative 1 16th. So that would mean that my k value is equal to um, what's up here? k squared is negative 1 16th, so k is equal to 1 fourth i, right? Um, and so I need a k in the numerator. That means I'll put a k in the denominator. So there's an 
i in the denominator over 4. I have an i over 4 in the numerator, and this is um, s plus 1 half, or 1 4 squared minus 1 16. So this is e to the negative 5 s over um, multiplying it 2 over i times e to the negative 1 fourth t times, ah, 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 I'm inverse transforming already. Okay, so let me write this out a little more cleanly. This is going to be 2 um, with a negative times e to the negative 5s times i over 4 over s plus 1 fourth quantity squared minus 1 16 or plus negative 1 16. Okay. The negative came about because I multiplied by i over i, so there should actually be an i in the numerator too right there. So, um, let's see. This is now ready for inverse transformation. I look at table entry number 5. Table entry number 5 tells me the presence of an exponential means a time delay of 5 seconds here according to its exponent. And then this becomes e to the negative 2 t minus 5 seconds right, times sine of um, 1 i over 4 times t minus 5 seconds. Now I need to remember the following formula, and that's the, if I have the cinch of ix, that's equal to e to the ix minus e to the minus ix over 2. All that that's missing to be a sine function is an i in the denominator. Otherwise, the numerator is just fine for the exponential representation of the sine function. So I'm going to divide this by i, and then that'll be precisely equal to sine x. So that means that, okay, there's a horrible way to derive that. So I now have that the sine of y, i, y, should be equal to, or i, x, should be equal to the cinch of i, x over, or i squared, x over i, which is equal to um, cinch of negative x over i. But cinch is odd, so this comes out, and then I multiply by an i over i, so we get i cinch x. Yeah, that was silly. Okay, so what do I notice about that? Well, this sine of i stuff, that'll be um, negative 2i u5t e to the negative 2t minus 5 times i cinch. 1 fourth t minus 5. But then the i hits that i, right? So those i's go away and they give a negative, so this becomes a positive. Alright. Fantastico.